I'm posted on the corner. I'm posted on the corner. Posted on the corner with George Trilly and Cock. You know, we live from the A-Town, but the thing that I love about being posted on the corner, they can hear us all over the world. More specifically, the city of Baltimore. Let me shine a light on Baltimore City. You know why? Because I got the CEO, the lady that got the streets going crazy, got the nation and the world slaughtered. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Pinky Go! I need to take you everywhere with me. What's up? Hey, you know What's up, Pinky Go? I'm happy to be here. Man, it's an honor to have you in my studio, posted on the corner with me. Uh, getting one on one yes. with you. Yes. Now I got solidified way before the pandemic. Yes, you did. I got solidified. How did it make you feel? Oh, it made me feel uh, <laughs> like I wasn't a virgin no more. You know what I'm saying? First, I was, my first time going, I was a virgin, and you know I ain't no virgin well, no more. Well, well, that's the plan. That's how it's supposed to make you feel. Yeah, I'm Man. a loyal. I'm a loyal. Oh, you're a loyal slut. Can yeah. we say that on the radio? Yeah, can we slut oh. with slutty vegan? Okay, so what's up, slut? Yeah, what's going <laughs> on? So let me let me get into your business a little bit. I mean, just personal life. Coming up in the streets of Baltimore. Yeah. What is it like growing up in Baltimore? Well, first of all, shout out to my city. Yes. Shout out to Baltimore, A down the hill. Hey, East Baltimore, West Baltimore. Okay. But I grew up on a street called Sedonia Avenue, right? And... When I was a kid, my father did about 22 years in prison, so I didn't grow up with him. I grew up with my mom, and she worked about four to five jobs. So while it was a middle-class neighborhood, you felt like you was in the projects a little bit because there was a lot of crime and stuff happening. So I tried my best to stay out of that way and really stayed under my grandmother and my sister and my family members. So I became a hustler at an early age in Baltimore, right? And and shout out to my city because that hustle mentality, I got that from Baltimore, right? Being being confident and being strong, I got that from my city. So I started throwing parties. Oh, I was one of the youngest party promoters in Baltimore. Uh, rest in peace to K Swift. Um, yes, yes. Yeah, you you know who who yes, she is. Uh, her yeah. birthday was just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, Saturday, like uh, ninety two. Yeah, she she's a legend in, in, in Baltimore, and and she used to throw some of my parties. She used to DJ some of my parties. So I was the youngest party promoter in the city. So here I am, fourteen years old, counting like four thousand dollars every single week with my mom on the floor, making more money than anybody that I know. But I knew that early on, I had that it factor, and I didn't know what the it was, but I wanted to amplify that, and I did that. So I would sell candy and food in high school. And then when I graduated, I packed up at 17 years old and I moved to Atlanta. That's and right. then the rest is history. <laughs> That's right. That's great. And speaking of history, when you move to Atlanta, you end up attending a at historical black college. I did. So I went to Clark Atlanta University, um, where that was the best decision I ever made in my life. And when I got to CAU, I literally did everything. I became a part of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I became the queen of the school. I was doing non -pro I was doing everything, right? And I knew life is so interesting, Nito, that... God really just be setting you up for stuff and you don't even realize it. The path is already written, right? So, like, that was a part of my path. I, I graduated from CAU and moved to Los Angeles, California with $250, wow. a duffel bag, and a suitcase. Wow. No plans. Wow. I just had faith. Mm -hmm. And I got to L.A., and in six days I got two jobs, one working at DSW and the other one working at the census. Wow. I was living in a three-bedroom house, four of us living in one bedroom, paying $300 a month. So when I tell you that I've been grinding for a very, very, very long time, because I believed in myself and I was a dreamer. Uh, long story short, I got into TV by mistake, wow. but it really wasn't a mistake at all. Um, and that afforded me the opportunity to become a pro producer on The Maury Show <laughs> and a whole bunch of other shows. Yeah, so I did a lot. Wow. I did a whole lot, and and long story short, I'm here. Uh, I'm here with this crazy business that everybody knows and loves called Slutty Vegan, yeah. and it really happened by happenstance, but the whole story has been written ever since, and I'm just happy to be here. Yes, it has. So before I get into this Slutty Vegan story, I did hear you say that you're a member of DST. That's I a am. Theta sorority My little oop is a little rough, so oof. <laughs> <laughs> what was your line name? What's your line name? Oh, I had a lot of them. Uh, I had hardcore. Um, I had Shinner, and Shinner means somebody that's always doing the most because I got big ideas, right? Uh, but I, I ended up becoming DP, and that was the Dean of Pledges. So I brought in a line, and I was the first vice president. And if you know anything about the Greek world, like that's a big deal in our organization. But I love DST. I love to give back, so that's why I did it. That's you know, real. and shout out to CAU. I love my school. That's real. You get you get the nation, get the world solidified. When it came to you creating this business and this entrepreneurship, how did you get the name Slutty Vegan? So let me tell you some background, and this is the part that I don't really tell a lot of people. So 
I was working on a TV show as a casting director, right? We went on hiatus. While we went on hiatus, because I'm just crazy like that, I started doing Grubhub and Uber Eats just in my spare time because I wanted to just drive around the city. I wanted to get to know people. And I thought it was really cool that if I could drive people who sit in the back, I can meet people because it's L.A. and everybody gets Ubers in L.A., right? So I pulled up to this location and I saw that they had a shared kitchen and I'm like, okay, cool. So when I moved to Atlanta, I'm like, I'm going to duplicate what I saw in L.A. So I was sitting in my bedroom. Mind you, this was a point in my life where I was the most focused. I was working out every day, working out, um, running five miles a day, reading a book a day, literally, right? I stopped going out. I stopped hanging with people. And I just was thinking. I was in think mode. So I was sitting in the house one day and it hit me like a light bulb, slutty vegan. I was hungry. I wanted some late night food. And the name just hit me. So again, I'm the type of person that got a million ideas. But this one was specifically different because... I ain't want to share it with nobody. You know how you got a good idea so good that you're like, I ain't telling nobody this one. That was what Slutty Vegan was for me. So I started researching and I went on YouTube and Google and I literally started putting the play together like football, mm. right? I started putting this play together and I had no idea that Slutty Vegan would be where it is today. I, I went from a shared kitchen to having a food truck to buying another food truck to now having four active locations, right? I own Bar Vegan 2 in Pont City Market and Bar Vegan Dinkies. Um, and I'm on track to open up 20 next year. 20! 20, 20, 20, 20, right? But I say all that to say... This is the girl from East Baltimore, Yo. right, that did this. And I just was always a big dreamer. I was a kid telling people, I'm going to make it. When I get older, I'm going to be a star. I didn't know what I was talking about. But I was literally putting my plan together. But little did I know the plan was already written and in place for me. That's real. First generation yeah. college graduate, yeah. CEO, entrepreneur. Pinky Cole is posted on the corner with George Trillian Incognito. You're changing the way that we a self fast food. How do you yeah. feel about that? Like you got you you doing your own thing with fast food. So let me t tell you something so crazy. So when I started Slutty Vegan, there were a lot of still a lot of vegan restaurants. Like shout out to to the best of the best. They're amazing. Um, but a lot of them did not close. Uh, they they didn't stay open too late. So when I came up with Slutty Vegan, I was literally the side salad and the fries kind of vegan, right? Because okay. it wasn't much to eat unless I'm cooking for myself. So I created it, and Slutty Vegan was really like the guinea pig. And what Slutty Vegan did was open so many doors for other businesses, especially the big businesses, to be able to try vegan options on their menu, something that they weren't doing before. So it feels good to know that I was kind of a leader in that space because now people knew that, all right, this girl got lines down the block. People waiting in line for seven, eight hours to get her food. Something got to work. So now you see all these big businesses popping up and want to do vegan food, which I appreciate now because now I got food options. But it just shows you the reach that the business has created. And it, sh it goes to show you that, like, if you're strategic and authentic with your approach, you will be successful in anything that you do. Now, Pinky Cole, you're here, and I, I tried to watch this thing from the beginning, Slutty Vegan, as much as I can. But if I recall right, it started with the truck, and then you used to set times and appointments. Yes. And, and some at certain times, you used to tell people at the last minute or, like, yes. you, you didn't release it that early. <laughs> but the line is still beat you there. It's almost like secret information. She's going to be here at this yes. time. Meet me there. And the line is meeting you before you get there. This strategic plan yeah. worked. Yeah, no, it worked. Listen, I'm very intentional about this business, right? I call it a slutty vegan because I know the two most Im important things in life is sex and food. Come on. We all like sex and Come we on. all need food, Come on. right? So if I can merge both of those together and require you to ask questions, I know that I've met my intention, right? So when people hear slutty vegan for the first time, the first thing they want to do is slutty vegan. What's that? Right. But I want you to do that because then I can teach you how to reimagine food, right? And in our community specifically, you know, when you hear about veganism, some people are like, yeah, veganism is nasty. It don't taste good. But like, there's so many black people that's been vegan for so long, it just wasn't advertised or marketed, really? right? And 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 now that veganism is quote-unquote trendy, we have an opportunity to make it beyond a trend. And Slutty Vegan is doing that, not just with food, but with community, yes. with opportunities, yes. and with giving people exposure and letting them uh, reach their ultimate potential. And that includes the foundation that I have called the Pinky Cole Foundation and a whole bunch of other stuff. Truly, before I get into your philanthropy and your community service and things like that, uh, before the pandemic, we had this slutty tour. 
Yes. And during the time I was in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, I believe, and the tour came through there. And I waited in line and got my guy solidified, now, too. you know you ain't got to wait no line. I, well, this is <laughs> before I met you, you know what I'm saying? But I, I done did my just do and support my, my black sister. But uh, we're talking about just the slutty tour, and it's hitting city to city. And, and it's what are some of your favorite cities to go to with this tour? Ooh, so we've done a lot. So shout out to Houston. Houston was bomb. Time. Baltimore was bomb. D.C. was bomb. The Carolinas was bomb. Yeah. Um, Every single, listen, and and this is not a cliche, every single city that we've done, we posted one Instagram fly and had over a thousand people standing out waiting for us. Mm. So that just tells me that we are literally going to duplicate the same experience that you got in Atlanta around the world. And this. Hey, that's the second sign too, cool. Yeah, I'm I don't know get some glue. Sign filed, it'll be a really good interview. Yeah, <laughs> no, we do. It's almost like it's almost like you want to sign a file on your interview. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. Right, Look you incognito me. sign. God damn it. Yeah, get me right, cuz. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Embarrassing. <little> <laughs> so. Yeah, she was in the middle of it. Go ahead. So um. You know, we've been to so many cities, and I'm very specific on the cities that we go to because this is a way to test the market, right? I am not your average CEO. Like, being a regular CEO just sounds stuffy as fuck. Like, I don't know if I could cuss, but sorry. But it's it's stuffy, right? I wanted to create an atmosphere where where you and, and, and people around you can feel like they could be a CEO and they, they didn't have to look a certain way. So we test the market in different cities. We post up and put up one flyer, two tops, and have literally over a 1,000 people coming. So when you ask me what's my favorite cities, all of my favorite cities, because they all come out for Slutty Vegan and Pinky Cole, and I just want to publicly say thank you for everybody that's been supporting the brand. We're three years old, so we done passed terrible twos. Uh-huh. And, 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 okay? So for anybody that got kids, you know what I'm talking about. So now we're at year three, and you see the business really going from – Mom and pop popular to a, a corporate company that's yes. about to scale. And that's really, really exciting. Yes, yes. Why eat Slutty Vegan? Well, first of all, Slutty Vegan is a 100% plant-based joint, right? You don't come to Slutty Vegan for the food. You come for the experience. When you walk into Slutty Vegan, it feels like Six Flags. It feels like Adventure World. It feels like Hershey Park. Like, you remember that growing up, right? So we want people to feel good. It's so much chaos going on in the world. It's so much economic downturn. There's so many unhappy people, depression. It's so many things that we're peril with every single day. Why not be able to come to a place that feels safe? Slutty Vegan makes you feel safe. When you walk in, we hugging you before the pandemic, yes, right? Yes. We, we, we're playing hip-hop music that feels good and makes you laugh. Yes. And then we're serving you with a smile, yes. right? So when you think about the other businesses that do that, you got Chick-fil-A, which has been known for that, but now you got Slutty Vegan that's right. known for that, yeah, right. right? In our communities, people expect uh, black-owned businesses to not be professional, not have good community service, not have quality products. We're changing the narrative of that. So when you come to Slutty Vegan, you are not just coming to a restaurant. You are coming to a safe space that allows you to, one, be yourself, two, feel good, and be a part of a bigger ecosystem that we're helping communities really win. And not just talking about it, but really doing it. You know, a lot of people be like, yeah, I do this for the community. Nah, we really do that, right? And we do it with a smile and in a way where people want to be a part of the brand. And that's why we continue to get the support that we've gotten for as long as we've gotten it for. So that explains the high frequency in all of your locations from the time that you walk up. Every employee <laughs> is through the roof. It's me. And it's a standard yes. that's set. Listen. And energy is high. Let me tell you something about energy. Energy will allow you to get opportunities that you probably would have never imagined, right? So when you go into my place of establishment, I, I live off my name, right? I'm going to get the money. The money going to come. But my name is, is, is the biggest currency that I could ever own. Because when people speak of my name, I want them to speak about the energy. I want them to speak about how I made them feel good. So I infuse that motto into Slutty Vegan. So when you go to Slutty Vegan... Slutty Vegan makes you feel good. Yes. Slutty Vegan has high energy. Yes. So anybody that comes to the brand got to be in alignment with my vision because I'm very clear and direct on that vision. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Yes. For somebody who hasn't been sluttified, we got to get them sluttified. <laughs> it's about time for y'all to get sluttified. Yes. How would you describe, you know, and invite them to get sluttified? I'm, I'm, I'm asking. When you come to Slutty Vegan, 
you have a euphoric experience eating a plant. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but no, when you come to Slutty Vegan, like it is literally a euphoric experience eating a plant based burger. I want people to be so stoked at the experience that by the time they eat the burger, they're like, damn, was that vegan? There weren't no animals in that. Real. Like, and that is, you know, people now only come to Slutty Vegan because they want to see what the hype is all about. Right, because they see everybody going crazy. You see the muck bangs. You see people raving about it. You see all the celebrities naturally oh, yeah. endorsing a brand that I never had to pay for. But when people see that, they just want to see what the hype is all about. So we create this hype around a business. You've never really seen restaurants do that outside of Big Dave's Cheesesteaks and a couple other ones. Right. right. So to be able to do that in a way where it's fun and cheeky and has its own persona, like that's a big win. I was talking off the air about how. Um, you know, restaurants now, especially Slutty Vegan, is now a part of the culture, yes. right? When you think about hip hop and R and B and the cultural movement and the Black Hollywood of Atlanta and New York and L.A., Slutty Vegan is a part of that conversation, right? We in the room. We not we not outside the door. We can get in the room. We in the room right now. Y'all y'all doorkeepers for real. Yeah. Come on now. So what's yeah. the process of somebody trying to come work with uh, Slutty Vegan? Oh, which part from the from from a crew member level or the executive level? They just want to be down because you're a super ain't black. Ex- <laughs> well, uh, there's a few ways to do it. So first of all, I'm very intentional about the people that I hire. So like, I got my people to look at resumes. I ain't looking at that. I don't even want to see your resume. I want to know your character, what you stand for, what you like to do for fun. Like, do you want to help grow an empire or you just want a paycheck? Like, I look at those things, and I'm an empath, so I feel the energy. You know, energy is real. So I base it off the energy, um, especially at the uh, the executive level. But crew members, we want people that got big energy. I tell my employees this all the time. If, if you come to work and you're having a bad day, go home. If it don't feel fun, go home. If you're here for a paycheck, go home. And that's how I'm growing my business. Like, I want people that's really going to ride or die for me professionally. Like, we always talk about ride or dying, but, like, ride or die for me professionally. You take care of me, I'm going to take care of you. And and that's the kind of energy that I attract at Slutty Vegan, which is why it's consistent across every restaurant you go to. That's real. Slutty Vegan CEO Pinky Cole is in the studio now. We're talking about the Slutty Vegan side. Let's talk about this Pinky Cole Foundation. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start with the life insurance. Yes. You you getting these, uh, our community right with the life insurance. Yes. What's going on? So, so myself and um, Derek Hayes, he has the uh, Derek and David Hayes Foundation. We were sitting in the house one day. And, and and I want to just take a moment to really talk about, like, that whole George Floyd situation. He really was a sacrificial lamb. And as unfortunate as it is, he was really an angel for a lot of us, especially black people. Because what happened after he died is that big companies and corporations wanted to inject money and capital and resources into black-owned businesses. So remember, there was a time we watching the news, people dying back to back. Like, like, Rashad, so many people, so many things happening. We're like, damn, like, how could we utilize our resources and our platform to to help black men not die as much? Like, to be honest. Right. And, and that was the conversation. So then we started to dive deep and we said black people really don't get life insurance like they should. So let's create something where we're providing it for free. They don't have to pay for it. They choose their own beneficiary. Right. And they get to to pick their policy and we don't take nothing from it. Why, do, why are we doing this? We don't have to, right? But we're doing it because we know we got a voice. And when you have a voice, and this is to all the celebrities and rappers and artists and athletes that are listening to this, when you have a voice, you got to utilize that voice for good. So that's what we did with our platforms. We utilized it for good, and we've been signing people up for life insurance ever since. And it's called the Square One Campaign, and I'm excited about it because we're doing what politicians ain't doing. Right. Like we, we we like hood politicians. Right. But we do it because this is what we love to do. Like I, I saw my mother who's Jamaican, like help everybody in the neighborhood, help help anybody. If you Jamaican, she's Jamaican. You can come move in like she was that type of person. So I absorbed that. So as an adult and an entrepreneur, I knew that I wanted to have social responsibility in my business, not just make money because you're going to make money all the time. But when you really do good, that money going to come back to you and you're going to be straight. That's real. You have a website, pinkygillsback.com. Yeah, www. That is, let me put my shameless plug. So if you want to donate uh, to the Pinky Cole Foundation and the Square One campaign that myself and Big Dave is doing, uh, please go to our website, www.pinkygivesback.com. You can donate because the pop-up is going to be there. Or um, if you want to be a part of the program and everything that we got going on, go to our uh, to Pinky Gives Back on Instagram and learn more information. Now, you created a scholarship for your alma mater, CAU, mm-hmm. uh, and you're doing a scholarship. What, what? 
So so we doing a lot. So uh, one one what you're speaking of specifically, myself and shout out to Harlem Hops in New York. Um, one of the owners, her name is Stacy Lee. We partnered together, and uh, we paid the balances of thirty college students at CAU. Yeah. Um, and the reason why we did that, because I remember when I was in college, the only year that I went to college for free was my last year, and that was because I won Miss Clark Atlanta University. Every single other year. I had to pay for college out of pocket. My mother had to co-sign, and we had loans, by the way, which I just recently paid off a year and a half ago, right? Shout out to Miss Judy, who I called at, at Navient, who got me right and cleared that balance. But we, we paid the balances for them, and we've done so much. Um, the Pinky Co. Foundation was founded in 2019, and it was a way to bridge the generational wealth gap, right? Um, so many times in our communities, we talk about lack of access and resources. The Pinky Co. Foundation provides those resources and the access. So a couple of the things that we've done, we paid the rents for local businesses. We partnered with the Steve Harvey and Marjorie Foundation to provide lights for families in Atlanta. Um, we, we've donated cars. We, we, we put people in position and given people op- opportunities. Um, we, we've done so much, gave out coats, fruits and vegetables. Rashard Brooks, who uh, unfortunately passed away at that Wendy's parking lot, myself and Big Dave, we partnered together um, to provide them life insurance, a brand new car for the family. And then we also partnered with CAU to provide them six hundred thousand dollars worth of scholarships and of course as you know we talked about the life insurance campaign um giveaways just just stuff to really just inject that money back in the community because the reality of it is is atlanta and beyond supports me so much and with that support i couldn't just sit on it and just be like all right thank y'all nah like like they really show me love and because they show me love i'm gonna do whatever it takes to make sure that like people rise up with me and more entrepreneurs need to do that as well you operate so high in L-O-B-E that I'm starting to think your full name is Pinky Gives Back Co. <laughs> like, I like You give that. back a lot. And I do. one thing that I noticed that you gave back was to the teachers. Yeah. Because teachers don't get enough credit. And you, no. you fed the teachers. And anytime we're in Atlanta, we could just see the slutty vegan truck up somewhere. Yeah. Like, I believe a week ago, I was on MLK. And yeah. we're doing something outside of Walmart on MLK. Yeah. And Slutty Vegan Truck was there. And you know what it's like when that Slutty Vegan Truck is out now. Yeah. That mean it's free. Yeah. That mean it's free. If, the, if you see the Slutty Vegan Truck in public in Atlanta, nine times out of ten is free. But I do that because, you know, as I build... I want the community to be able to build with me. So I'll always have little moments where I'll have like a free giveaway and give out free food. But that's really my way of saying thank you. Like the city of Atlanta really hold me down. Right. right? Like and, and beyond. Right. There's people that come from around the world to get the slutty goodness. So when I see that, I'm like, this is my thanks to you. This is my repayment to you to say, I see how much you people go hard for me yeah. and slutty vegan. Right. And that feels good. So I just want to go hard for the people. Yeah. In your spare time, I, I just want to ask you a few questions. Uh, are you watching a TV show or a movie? I don't watch TV. You don't watch TV? Uh, what's the last song you listen to on your car, in your car on your way up here? Oh, the last song that I listened to on my car. Oh, uh, Meek Mill. He got a song on Expensive Pain. I don't remember the name of the song, but it's a line on there. And the line, how the line go? Um, they say I changed, but I'm in the studio. What do you mean? Yeah. You ever heard his album? Yeah, I listen to it. I listen his to album it. is the bomb. Expensive anyway, Pain. Yeah. Expensive Pain, a song on Expensive Pain. I just listened to that, but um, I love music. That's real. Well, I, I love Neo Soul, too. For sure. Yeah. You, were, you were sharing offline some of your personal favorites. I keep yeah. going to go jam some of those. Uh, when it comes to your menu, how do you know that the presentation is complete? When you're like, I want my one-night stand to taste like this. How do you know, like, oh, that's a one-night stand, or this is a menage a trois? Um, how do you know? Mm-hmm. Um, consistency. <laughs> I don't know if that was a question, but like uh, making sure that it's consistent in my business. We, you know, we got SOPs now. So every time you come to Slutty Vegan, it's going to taste the same now. Once upon a time, we was like making everything by hand. But now like we put systems in place and we got co-packers and all that stuff. So like now your experience is going to be the same. So if you want to come to Slutty Vegan, absolutely get that one night stand because that's the most popular burger. Yeah. Um, and we got our bacon. It tastes like the real, real thing. Bacon. Yeah, I got it tastes some like home. it tastes like real bacon. Um, but we literally are helping people to reimagine food. So whatever you get on the menu, uh-huh. you are gonna love it. That's Whether real. it's the sandwiches or the slushies or the uh-huh. pies or our, a sea moss banana pudding, uh-huh. we really got a lot for everybody. Whether you're gluten free or not, we got something for you. 
you're constantly growing. I've seen that you're opening up a location in my hometown, Columbus, Georgia. How do you? You got to ring the bell for that. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Some old Sam County. Ain't nobody incognito. Question is, the question is, how do you choose your locations? How do you know where you're going to go next? So I'm very intentional about that, too. Um, so I like to go in locations that are either food deserts, uh, vegan food insecure or right in the middle of gentrification. And let me tell you what that does. If I can put a very pop and slutty vegan into that community, I can raise the community up. So now other business owners do well. Now I buy the buildings for most of my properties um, that I put slutty vegan in. So now when the property value goes up, the property value of my space goes up as well. Right. And I'm going into areas that are not developer friendly. The developers ain't really interested right now. So I'm finding a diamond in a rough. Yes. Right. Yes. And, and, and it's been working for us. Like we've been buying buildings that are in like the semi hood and, and putting slutty vegan there. So we know that we're going to bring traffic there. We're going to change the neighborhood and we're going to make it better. And it's just a win for everybody. It's a win for the community. It's a win for our pockets. It's a win for um, the business and how we elevate the business and the storytelling of the business. So every single thing that we do is very strategic and intentional. Yes, yes. So that answers my question about where you're going to go into retail. So there goes yeah. that. Yes, you, yes, you definitely. Oh yeah, are. retail is happening. Like we 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 have so many products. We got slut dust, uh -huh. and that's an all-purpose seasoning. Uh -huh. um, we have one of the best retail departments that we're growing, and we've already alone without advertisement or anything like. We, we we got a bag with the retail alone. It's not just a restaurant anymore. It's a brand. People want to wear the brand. When I walked in here, y'all saw what I had on, and it was slutty vegan. Truly. You know what I'm saying? And, like, people want to wear the brand. Yes. Right? So we have so many avenues and so many retail <laughs> options. Um, and we're going to the market with our sauce um, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I'm excited about jumping into the retail game. I'm very new to the game, but I got a really good team, and we're going to get there, and we're excited. Slutty Vegan Merch. Do we have to go in store to get the merch or can we order it online? You can order it online at sluttyvegan.shop. So www.sluttyvegan.shop. And we have everything. And, you know, it, whether you're vegan or not, you can wear the brand because it's just a cool brand to wear, right? Um, and it's for the culture. It's like a true experience. But we got a lot of dope stuff. We got hats. We got book bags. We got purses. Um, we got air fresheners. We got everything. Yes. No, yeah. You're, you're keeping your hands involved in a lot of things, and they're all prospering. Yes. Black excellence at its finest. Shout out to uh, CAU. Shout out to everything that you're doing. Uh, have you ever thought about signing any artists or creating like <laughs> a you know company mm, or something? It's funny you said that. <laughs> um, so I actually do have an artist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my master P right now. So I um I I, I did a competition um where I basically said whoever has the best flow about Slutty Vegan, I'm going to put them on a song with a Grammy Award winning artist. And we got a winner. Shout out to um, Camille Freeman. We call her Coach Free. Um, and I put her on a song with a Grammy Award winning artist. Who? 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 I can't tell you yet, but just know that he he's a big deal. He is. He's he, a big deal. A he, okay. Yes, he's a big deal. And I'm excited um, about dropping that song. And it just may drop on Super Bowl. That's okay. the hint. But I can't tell you who it is. Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. I ain't telling you. I ain't got time to think about it. <laughs> but just know that, 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 again, Slutty Vegan is changing the name it changing the game and we are literally becoming a household name with the octopus legs that we create under the umbrella of the brand yes uh dinkies yes let's talk about bar vegan dinkies like pond city market you're there it's a vibe too by the way Thank and you. you got my favorite remy martin at the bar but <laughs> I, i'm in there I'm, I'm at bar vegan i'm at the dinkies How, what made you want to do the bar vegan and dinkies well first of all isn't it so funny that like i'm doing an interview with you and we talking about restaurants like you don't really hear that like that's like really dope right now so i'm happy to be here um but bar vegan um and dinkies was started earlier this year um, and is just as well known and popular as Slutty Vegan. So um, Big Dave's created the menu for Dinkies. So that's Derek and Pinkies. And it's inspired by his Philly cheesesteak concept. But obviously, you know that I'm vegan and I don't touch anything meat. So we came together. I'm like, listen, can you recreate your menu and make it vegan? And he did it. And everybody loves it. And then Bar Vegan is a curated experience where you come and you can get bar food and a vibe. You can get music. You can get good drinks and just have a really good time. And that's located in Pond City Market in Atlanta. So if you're not from here, make sure that when you come to Atlanta, it's three places you got to go. And I got to plug them because that's my friend. So you got to go to Slutty Vegan. Truly. Then you go to Bar Vegan Dinkies. Truly. And then I'll eat meat. So my vegans go get the fries from Big Days. But make sure that you go <laughs> and support him um, and get some food from there. For sure. Now at Bar Vegan, there's these customized like tray lunchbox type. Yes. 
that now that goes into marketing. How did yeah. you come up with this? What is this about? So marketing is my sweet spot. I was a television producer, like I said, back in the day. So, like, I'm literally taking everything that I did in TV and bringing it over to the restaurant space. I'm a creative, right? So beyond everything else, beyond being a CEO, beyond doing all these interviews and all stuff, I like to think. I use my brain a lot. And I like to be around people that think. So all of the ideas that you see through the marketing of both Slutty Vegan and uh, Bar Vegan are really just things that I'm sitting in the house like, oh, my gosh, we should do this. Oh, how about this idea? And I'm just coming up with ideas all the time and. I like to call it mental boxing, okay. right? Mental boxing, and I got this from Derek. Mental boxing is basically when you train your mind. So just like when you're playing football or basketball or rapping, like you got you to gotta keep doing it and keep going so that you can continue to get stronger. And those things stick. And the marketing sticks, and I love to do it, and that's my favorite thing to do. Truly. Uh, in closing, we're just going to talk some favorites. Who's your favorite athlete? Chris Paul. Chris Paul, for sure. Uh, what is your favorite birthday celebration? Which was your favorite one? Um, my birthday? What year? Yeah, wh- which one was your favorite? One? <laughs> Most memorable one. <laughs> my um, ooh, my twenty fifth birthday. Uh-huh. Yeah, my twenty fifth birthday was memorable because I was just around a lot of people, and um, I'm not materialistic, but I got some material stuff, and I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. <laughs> but no, that was cool. For sure. In closing, I got this wonderful idea from a lady named Pinky Gives Back Cole. And she said, <laughs> Incog, when your when your guests come in here, you should have them, you know, kind of like freestyle because they're not known for rapping. So, uh, you know, do you got some bars for us? <laughs> hey, are you, you know I can't rap, but you know does. what I'm saying? Yo, yo, hold on. Wait up. Hey, hey, yo, you get you would give me this beat. Yo, yo. Yo, it's Pinky Cole. I'm sitting here with Incognito, and I'm busting a rap. And I'm here, and I ain't in a trap, but I sell burgers, right? And that shit tastes good. And if you're from the hood or not, you can come get good, yeah, because I'm on the radio, and I ain't even no rapper. I ain't no... Oh, I'm about to cuss. <laughs> Real deal trapper. Real deal trapper. <laughs> Pinky Cole, the CEO. See? Oh, Album man. dropping never. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she can sign you. She can sign you. But Pinky I can Gilles sign you, but com. the album is never dropping. Pinkygillsback.com, <laughs> man. You can find her in CNN, Business Magazine. You can catch her on uh, Forbes Magazine, all over the blogs. Exuberating black excellence. You're always welcome to come. Can I say us. something? Yes, ma'am. So usually, I want to talk to the entrepreneurs real quick. Do I got time? Yes. So... Y'all are listening to me on this uh, on, on this program, and I really want to offer some encouragement to entrepreneurs from around the world. You are literally looking at somebody who I was an average student in school, right? But I'm a thinker. But I believed in myself so much that anything that I put my mind to, I do it. So you, and I'm talking to you listening to this right now, that idea that you got, stop being lazy. Put it together. Do it. Run it up. Forget what people saying about you. Forget what people telling you that it's not a good idea. Do that thing because that thing is going to change your generational pattern. It's going to set you up. It's going to set your family up. And your wildest dream is going to come true. So I believe in you. I trust you. And I want you to do that thing so that you can be beside me and we could be building together. So hopefully somebody caught that and felt that in their spirit. <laughs> Let the church say amen. <laughs> On the corner, I'm posted. On the corner.